We have a problem with our wastewater. The basic problem is that domestic wastewater contains very high levels of phosphates and nitrates. These are really bad for the environment. They're also difficult and expensive to remove during the wastewater processing. We're working with Welsh Water on this project. There are very strict uh, legal requirements uh, on the levels of nitrates and phosphates that they can discharge into rivers. They have some very set environmentally sensitive sites um, and therefore they're interested in technology that can help them to meet uh, these very, very strict standards. Algae are very simple organisms. They require only light, carbon dioxide, some very simple uh, minerals uh, and water for growth. So they're very, very easy to, to culture. What you have in front of you is what's called a photobioreactor. Um, it's full of water. That water is pumped from a wastewater treatment works um, owned by Welsh Water. Uh, it comes into the system which is full of algae. Uh, the algae absorb the, the nitrates and the phosphates from the water, essentially uh, cleaning it. Um, and then the water leaves the system and we harvest the algae from the tubes, which is our, our basic product. The products from algae that we're interested in are, first of all, pigments. Pigments that are used in the aquaculture industry to provide the colour for salmon and trout and shrimps. Um, also for making protein, which is used in, in animal feed. And eventually, they'll be useful to produce biodiesel. We have demonstrated that our process can remove these phosphates and nitrates. Uh, where we're going by the end of this year is I believe we will have put in place the first prototype production platform which will essentially allow us to achieve a, a replicable and sustainable uh, algae production process. The reason I've decided to partner with the University of Bath is they already had an algae project up and running and it struck me that they would be able to bring a cross-disciplinary approach with far more depth than I could ever achieve simply by hiring a chief scientist. And so what I've managed to get uh, in terms of that partnership is a great deal of embedded knowledge that's already in the university. So when we come up against a problem that might not be directly solvable by the team, they can liaise with their colleagues and draw out that knowledge and bring it to bear within the project.